Hi, everybody, wherever you may be. Welcome back to North America Radio Guide. My name's Larry, Kilo 7, Hotel November. It's nice to have you back. I've been a DXer, shortwave listener, medium wave, ham, over 47 years. Really, to be honest, that's where I started. I've been in professional radio for many years. I, I've really, I've eat, slept, breathed radio, really, for a long time. And one of the things I really could never learn was Morse code. In fact, it really caught me from getting my ham radio license for many years. Now I have it, and I'm very blessed and grateful to. One of the things I'd like to tell you about today is something I hope can help you. What do you think a colander, and I'm, I like to use visual cues from when I was a teacher. It's something that kind of helps some of my students, and it helps me understand too. So if this doesn't make sense, I'll try and make it, okay? This is your typical spaghetti or noodle colander, right? You drain the noodles in it. Now, it's got a lot of metal area, and it also has a lot of holes in it. Think of this as your normal wire antenna, whether it be a dipole or a vertical. We're not talking about directionals, not Yagi's, not cobwebs, not OptiBeams, none of those. We're talking about dipoles, verticals, all that, okay? So those antennas have a lot of metal, a lot of copper, whatever they use, but a lot of metal area. That metal catches everything. Signals, environmental noise, static crashes, tons of electrical energy goes through that antenna. The holes. The holes in this represent the signals your antenna misses because it's not designed to be an optimal receive antenna. It's made to be an optional transmit antenna. That's why you do SWR. That's why you check to make sure it's resonant, all of that. Even if you didn't have a resonant antenna, you'd still be able to hear signals on it. You just couldn't transmit one or you'd blow your radio up. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Now, think of a funnel. Funnel's different than the colander, okay? The colander represents your regular ham radio antenna, vertical or dipole, okay? Again, not directional. The little funnel represents a receive antenna, typically very small, about three feet in diameter. They go out and they go to a very fine hole, okay? They're not filled with holes like this. They funnel all the noise into one unique space, okay? That's really how a magnetic loop or loop antenna works the same way. So instead of losing all the signal all over the place like you do with all that metal out there, you get the antenna working for you as a dedicated receive antenna to bring the signal into your rig. That's how it works, okay? So in essence, I wanna personally thank Richard Stubbs from MFJ Antennas. Richard was very, very kind and generous enough to send me one of his 1788, excuse me, 1886, got that one wrong, 1886 receive antennas, and I defy you to find it in this picture. <laughs> this is a Where's Waldo thing. You know, excuse my long grass. It's in the corner of the fence. It's where the fence goes to a 90. The antenna's up about 18 feet. It's in the corner. It goes straight up. Now, tomorrow, I'll show you how I mounted it and give you some tips on how you can rotate that antenna. Because again, when you have a receive antenna, the beautiful part about receive antennas is they hear well, okay, but they also have what's called a null or a quiet place where it will help to get rid of interference. That's one of the beauties of a receive antenna. Now that null you would think might be on the edge of the antenna, like right over here, but it's not, it's right in the center. So wherever the center is on the 1886 or the 1788 or 86 antennas, they're in the center of the antenna. That's the null, okay? And the receive, the strongest part of the receive is along the edges, okay? That's where you get it. Now, the 1886, 18, sorry, the 1786 and 1788, they're all designed to do certain things. Now, in the case of this antenna, the 1886, is designed to receive only. That's a good thing. 
you are a shortwave listener, like to listen to AM stations from a long ways away, this is your antenna. Hands down. There's no tuning required. You don't have to do anything to it. All you got to do is put it up in the air. You can even have it three feet off the ground. It's that sensitive. It's a phenomenal piece of machinery. It uses twin MMIC push-pull amplifier, so it basically pumps up the signal, and it gives you an amazing opportunity to hear things you normally would miss. It's a fantastic thing. How MFJ built it, I have no idea. And it's well-constructed. It's made out of aluminum. It's very easy to handle. It's about two and a half pounds. I actually have mine on a metal, excuse me, a wooden dowel. I'm old fashioned. Being from the hobby from a long time ago, I just don't like to use metal masts for a receive antenna because to me, it's just more metal up there. I want the only metal used to listen. That's it. I don't want any interference coming from the mast. Zero. I just want the antenna to hear. That's why I put it on wood. Okay. Now I've got a way you can use this that you can actually turn it yourself by hand. If you don't have a rotator, rotators can be three or $400. The antennas can be three or $400 or higher. It's a big investment. So easy way to turn it, keep it in one place. If you like it, I'll show it to you soon. Okay. Now let's take a look really, really quick at the bands. This is tonight. The bands are loud. I'll put it that way. Best way to describe it. A lot of activity in the bands. Now, on the 101 D and MP Yesu radios, they do have a feature where you can transmit on one antenna and receive on another. So, if you take a look here at the far right where I'm pointing, right there, kind of zoom in a little bit on it here, you see antenna R slash T1. What that means is it's using antenna 3 as the receive antenna and antenna 1 as the transmit antenna. Now, this radio is very sensitive. You can tell already that my attenuation is way up there at 12. See that? 12 dB. Let me show you what happens because this antenna is so sensitive and the radio is so sensitive. Let me show you what happens if you turn the attenuator off. Watch the waterfall. Look at that. That's how much it picks up. It's absolutely astounding what this thing does. So I'm going to put it back to 12 where it's a little more manageable. All right. <laughs> so there you go. So this radio is hypersensitive and it's very selective. Those two things are great for working DX radio. One of the things I've been thrilled about with this antenna since I received it today and have been playing radio today has been to be able to listen, just to hear stuff and see how well it works. Let me show you real quick, 20 meters. Now this is nighttime, okay? 20 meters, and as you can tell by the clock on the screen, 10.55 at night, that's Pacific time. This is with no attenuation, zero. There's nothing, okay? That signal right there is coming from Southeast Australia. Now, I know it's difficult to hear, but as hams know, many times the best way to work DX, long distance contacts, are through your headphones, right? So, in this case, I can't really reproduce what's here. Okay, the call sign of this ham is Victor Kilo 3, Tango Juliet Kilo. He's in Victoria, in Australia, where it's currently winter, about to turn to spring. All right, so your attenuator here, as you notice, the attenuator is off, okay? Now, if I bring it up just a little bit, just to knock down the signals a little bit, you see what happens, right? Here a little bit. I know the signal's a little washed out, but it's coming from a long ways away. And keep in mind, this is on 20 meters at almost 11 o'clock at night in horrible conditions this is horrible conditions and somehow this little loop is picking up a signal from 8,000 miles away folks i gotta tell you again this signal would typically be something 
excuse me, that you would hear quite well with your headphones on. But I want to come live right now to explain to you not only that the signal's there, but I can hear it. Now, if I move to one of my other antennas, watch what happens. This is what, what just blows me away about this antenna and why I think more people should be using receive antennas as part of just standard equipment for their radios, just instead of buying just a dedicated transmit antenna, right? I mean, we buy transmit antennas all the time. We check their specs. We want to know how they irradiate. But we never think about the receive antenna. And to me, I think it, it's just you're doing half the job. You still have to hear. And I know that some folks, well, they listen on SDRs. They make their QSOs that way. I just, I'm old-fashioned. I, I believe you should hear the QSO from your own radio. Make the call. Hear it on your own rig. Have the satisfaction and know that you were able to accomplish that. It's pretty special. So again, I know it's hard. I know there's some static. But you got to remember, this is 20 meters at the bottom of the sun cycle using a three-foot aluminum loop. That's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Now, I do know folks have looked at this and said, well, you know, it's good for shortwave listening or it doesn't make much of a difference based on maybe a vertical or something. Well, hold on. Let me show you this over my vertical, okay? I'm going to switch. Right now, I'm on my ZS6BKW dipole, which is essentially similar to a G5 RV, only it's modified just a little bit. Now, I just hit the lock button so I don't bump the VFO and change frequency. Let me let you hear the difference on my antenna switch. I'm going to bump to my AV680 vertical so you can hear the difference and see it on the waterfall. Watch this. Now, if I move over, I've got to trade change over to antenna one only. There. That's antenna one. Because remember, before we were receiving on antenna three, transmitting on antenna one. Now, I'm just on antenna one, which is an AV680 high-gain vertical antenna that costs about $600. Here's the signal. Nowhere. It's nowhere. But if I bump it over to the loop, there it is. There it is. Now, let's check it against a monoband 20-meter double bazooka. It's mounted about 30 feet in the air. Just a moment. Let me switch antennas again. Okay, so now I'm on my... 20 meter dedicated antenna. And there it is. Now, this is an antenna that's designed to work only on this band, only on 20. That's it. That's it. That's turning off the noise reduction. <laughs> Let's turn that back up because it's a little bit nasty, it's a little loud. So we'll we'll even bump up the attenuation. Excuse me, we'll turn it down. Pardon me. We're gonna we're gonna turn down the attenuation just to get something. There's nothing there. So literally, what you've got to do to hear the signal is bump back over to number three. And there he is. Wow. I gotta tell you, you know, for years when I was in amateur radio, um before I got into ham radio, I should say, when I just did DXing, whether it had been, you know, medium wave listening from a long ways away, or I did, you know, ham broadcast listening or short wave, which was one of my favorites. I always loved losing, loved using loops. Say that three times. Love using loops. <laughs> That's tough. So the Wellbrook loop, fantastic antenna. This MFJ 1886 wonderful and fantastic it doesn't describe it no tuning you can go all the way down to the long wave frequency if you need to you can work 160 you can go up to 10 meters i mean this thing is so wide ranging how well it works 
It weighs two and a half pounds. I can't believe it. Folks, if you have a car, right, and you want to, you know, make it perform well, you're going to do little modifications to make it perform well. Okay, it's just the way it is, it's the way car guys are. Excuse me. I don't know why more people in amateur radio don't look at the fact that they should be using a receive antenna. You should be, because if you're not, you're missing a lot of signals. You are, and and there'll be people who argue with me and say, no, I can hear it based on my vertical, and I see, I, you can look, and wait. I've seen a ton of YouTube videos. I have. Look at the waterfall. Just look. Listen. Look. You'll see the difference when they switch to a loop. Every single time you'll see it. Now, I'm not knocking the folks that do it. They're wonderful people. Some of them are very good friends. But folks, the eye test, this test, it doesn't lie. A loop antenna is something your ham radio should absolutely have, period. And I'll be honest, I, I've been blessed to have a buddy who has a Kenwood TS2000 that he's lent me. I might see if I can hook that up this weekend. I'm, a, I'm afraid to kind of use it because if I use it and break it, you know, eh, not a good thing. But the point is, folks, if you, if you do one thing for your ham radio station, one thing, and you've already got an antenna that works, buy a loop, just buy a receive loop. What it brings back to you is going to come back tenfold. It will. And you'll say, gosh, you know what? That was one of the best investments I ever made because I can hear things now. Or I can at least null out that noise of my neighbor's plasma, like my neighbor. But that's the way it works. Whether you buy the MFJ, which I highly recommend, the 1886, that's what this is or the 1788, 1786, which by the way, both of those you can use to transmit as well as receive, you're doing your radio a big favor because you're giving it a good resonant transmit antenna, which everyone wants to have, but not enough people want to have an optimal receive antenna. Okay. Now, if you've got the money for a big vertical, I'm sorry, a big uh, Yagi or an OptiBeam, something like that, Oh, those are thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. One of these, a few hundred dollars. Makes a big difference. So think about it. Ask yourself that question. Can I benefit from having a better antenna to hear back on? If the answer is yes, you should be looking for a receive loop because I'll tell you, more people should be using them if they want to be serious about making contacts. All right. Friends, I'll be back tomorrow I'll show you how we do the little switcheroo of the area that the null can be found on that antenna. It's a simple way to put it up. It's very easy, and you can turn it by hand and still have it about 18 feet in the air. Okay, so we'll catch up with you soon. Again, 1886, double thumbs up. See you soon. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching the North America Radio Guide. Goodbye, everybody.